but I didn't have any winter gear with me. I just had the a t-shirt, a long sleeve shirt, and one pair of pants. And so I would just keep switching the pants out from my face to my legs every like few minutes so that my legs didn't get too cold and my ears didn't get too cold. And then oh yeah, I'm getting my back. Oh yeah, I'm giving it back. Oh yeah, they bite my swag. Don't chew it on, don't chew it on crack. Oh, yeah, don't only care if they buy. Don't only care if they buy. Don't only care if they buy. I'm spreading positive. Welcome back to the Treehouse Show. You just listened to Biters by Yours Truly. You are tuned into um, the chillest podcast in the universe. What can I say? Today we have an incredible guest we have a a pioneer we have a mountaineer we have a president of a frat we have a marathoner correct me if that's not a word but yeah we, we coined it <laughs> yeah that's well right. we coined it we have a <laughs> coined it yeah. longest trail in the world hiker trekker that's right. ever um we have my boy ricky that is i What's How up? are you feeling on this beautiful Sunday afternoon? Oh, living the dream, man. Everything's great. It's nice and warm. At least in here. You know, can't really wish for much more. Attitude of gratitude. Yes, exactly. Elation followed by deflation. Mm. I'm writing these quotes <laughs> down mentally and processing. <laughs> That's beautiful. How does it feel to just be back in civilization and everything? It's a lot of readjustments. Um, you know, you get used to doing something day in, day out. Uh, once you're stopped doing it, it's like, well, what do I do now? You know, how do I fill my day? It's a, it's a lot to get used to, but you know, you adjust. That's one thing humans are good at. Most of us. Yeah. <laughs> most of <laughs> us. Know? Yeah. Most of us. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's beautiful. You know, we had, um, and, uh, we had a holidays, you know, on, and not everybody celebrates Thanksgiving, if you know the history, but it is good to have time to, you know, kind of spend time with loved ones and and just take time to relax. Yeah. You know, because a lot of us as adults, you know, we lose we lose touch with our like inner inner child and we, we lose, you know, we lose touch with our like inner inner peace or things that like make us us yeah exactly. you know we get caught up in other people's shit working That's for right. other people doing things for other people so it's good to just have time and in that time you can do what you want with that time but some of us are using that time to really tap into like what it really means yeah man us. you gotta appreciate what's around you improve every day honestly <laughs> That's man about it. that's beautiful um yeah, he plays, Ricky plays Dungeons and Dragons. So That's right. Talk about tapping into your inner child. Exactly. It's the best game in the world. I love it. How did it, how did that, uh, you said you had a game yesterday. Yes, I did. That's great. We killed a dragon, actually. Is that sweet. like the equivalent of winning? Uh, Not dying is the equivalent to winning. <laughs> okay, that's like life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome. Okay. Um, What does killing the dragon mean? In Dungeons uh, and Dragons world, it's pretty literal. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kill the dragon, yeah. Is it like Dra the hardest boss? Uh, for us right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's mm. tough. Somebody died, man. It's crazy. Rest in peace. That's right. What was his name? Uh, Rufus. R.I.P. Rufus. Yeah. Rufus, I didn't know you very well, but you was a real one. <laughs> you know, Rufus, you did your job. That's you right. Know, you you held down the fort. <laughs> That's you know right. what I'm saying? You, you will be remembered. That's right. <laughs> you know. The dragon slayed. Dragon, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that sounds fun. That sounds fun. I'm, I'm actually time. interested now. Like, I might talk about trying something new, you know? That's right. Do it. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, Ricky, so how we met is we kind of go way back, 2015, 2016. Um, yeah, that's about, I feel like, freshman. Yeah, freshman year. College, college. scene. Um. We met at like a, a, a fraternity kind of recruiting event. Yep. That's you know, right. we were super chill, you know, introduced ourselves. Um, it, Facebook was like all the rage back then. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had each other on Facebook. In the gym. In the gym. Yeah. Like, um, you know, we didn't get too close because he went on to become the president of the frat. But I kind of just did my own thing. But we would always chop it up in the gym. We would 
the commons. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like we'd always show love. You see each other like shit going. What's yeah, good? Right? You know what I'm saying? And that's all it was. It was always love. And then uh, we graduated, I think the same ceremony, right? I never went to the ceremony. Mm. December 2020. Oh. Oh, you, you that was yours, December 2020. Yeah. Okay, I took an extra was... semester. I got the dual major. So I had to do the extra Oh, semester. you did co-term. Then dual major, two bachelors. Which were in aerospace and astrophysics was the other one. Holy shit. I didn't even know about that. Yeah, explains the space tattoos. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> show the show the camera your test your ink. Oh, I'll show this one. Mm. Quasar. Oh shit. That's right. We got we got Nils Nils DeGrasse Ricky <laughs> <laughs> in this bitch. Yep. I love that. <laughs> Astrophysicists, man, you guys are fucking crazy, man. Like. Yeah, dude. Kind of love space. Honestly, man, that's all we have. Is space. <laughs> you know. Yes, it is. There's space, and then there's the absence of space, that's which is right. matter. And there's just then there's antimatter, but let's not go there. That's a conversation. For yeah, us. that's a whole episode, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, um, you know, I went off, got a job, and everything. He went off, got a job, did his thing. Um, but basically, you know, we kind of both just did our own thing, and I hadn't seen him or heard from him on social media in a while. He makes a post. First thing I do, <laughs> I see is I see Ricky Toby. I'm like, I'm gonna read this post. I, you just the brain just knows without explaining. Like when you almost miss somebody or haven't. Oh. Exactly. No, for real. Like you notice the absence of something. You just notice yeah. the absence of something. And then when it's reintroduced, you appreciate it more. That's, That's just life. Right. So I'm like, I have not seen Ricky post in a minute, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm reading the post. And then like as, as I'm reading the post and then like literally as I'm reading, I'm like, if straight to the point <laughs> was a post, it's this point, this post. Because literally in the post, he's like. Hey, you need, did you even say hi guys or whatever? Oh no, <laughs> man, just straight Appalachian up Trail, man. Appalachian Trail, two thousand two hundred miles, one hundred and twenty three days. Yeah, one hundred twenty three days. Also one two three. That's like what a number, right? Exactly. You know, like if you believe in angel numbers and mysticism, there you go. That's you know, right. Like, eat up, but and I'm just like, I'm just like mouth open, and I comment. You, I comment hey, like, right. I'm like, bro, like I'm motivated, I'm inspired, like this is crazy, like. <laughs> And it's just like, he's just describing like a bear attack and like, you know, how he saved lives and hitchhiked and just all these things that I've always been interested in was just in one post, but in brief as fuck. It was like a Twitter post on Facebook. Brevity, yeah. That's right. You know, and and it, it just really, you know, I had to, I was like, I got to interview this guy. I got to talk to this guy. <laughs> I slide in the DMs. <laughs> I slide in the DMs. And I'm like, bro, come, come through. And he's like, I'll come through if you don't put all those fucking edits in there. <laughs> and I'm like deal <laughs> so like um so yeah here we are and um i just like to get you know straight into it so how did how did how did this happen like what was going through your mind up until the point where you needed to make such a dramatic uh, change in your life well i had finished a teaching job in houston uh and then i Got LASIK surgery, and when I was about waiting in the lobby for the surgery, I started looking up, you know, camping trip ideas, and then a hiking trip. And it turned out that the hiking, the longest hiking trail in the world, was right here in the U.S. So I said, "I'm going to do that on Monday." And then I did. Wow! Just spontaneous. Yeah, man. You know, I got my my eagle eagle vision now. Yeah. Let's put it to use. This. No, no point in waiting. Do it now. Jesus Christ! So, so <laughs> you, so you just decide to just embark on this, you know, Lord of the Rings esque adventure. Yeah. And you just in a, in a week, you know, you have your gear, you know, you print out, but you you don't just go into it foolishly. No. Yeah, I looked up some. You know, I took that week, did my research, got some books. Most of it you figure out on the way, but like where you're going is kind of important to know. So figured that out who would have known yeah exactly <laughs> uh but yeah most of it was know what i needed to start off with mm -hmm. and then figure out what i didn't need while i was on the trail mm. that's really how i approached it okay so you're in houston mm. so you drive to where it starts yeah in georgia mm -hmm. drive to georgia um so what do you so you just drive to georgia and then what happens next I stepped foot on the trail. I parked my car and I stepped foot on the trail. 
Uh, well, the approach trail. Mm-hmm. But the pre trail. Yeah, the pre trail. <laughs> which is like 11 miles of trail that leads up to the actual Appalachian Trail, mm. which is just dumb. Why not just make it 11 miles longer? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, parked my car. You could park your car at the state park for like mm. 40 bucks for the year or something like that. Cheap as hell. Yeah. Yeah, so I just started and figured all that shit out as I go. That is amazing. So, so you it's um 14 states? Yeah, 14 states. 14 states. Um, you started in Georgia, mm-hmm. right? So what was the weather like? What time of year was this? Uh, July. Mm-hmm. July time of year. And the weather was like hot, I suppose, but you have the tree cover, so you mm. got shade all around you. Um, but yeah, I was in in the beginning. I was in t-shirts and one pair of pants, one mm. pair of sweatpants, and then I at the end there, I was like fifteen layers, and it was getting cold, man. I was getting below zero every night. Yeah, it was crazy. Fahrenheit. Yeah. And Celsius too. They're both below zero, but <laughs> well, definitely. <Celsius. laughs> I saw the pictures. Yeah, like the evolution from like summer Toby, summer summer Ricky, to like winter, you know, John Snow. Oh, yeah, Ricky. <laughs> it was just like a lot, of, a lot of weight and gained a lot on my face. But you did you grow a full beard? I grew a full facial hair. I don't know about beard. It's probably a little too much value. Mm. Uh, the first thing I did was I shaved it off, though. <laughs> you guys, is it like... Yeah. Didn't the beard, like, give you, like, warmth and extra protection from the other I don't know about that. It was just annoying. <laughs> Getting caught in <laughs> shit. Yeah, just, like, playing with it, sitting there. Mm. Some things. It is a distraction. Uh, yes, exactly. It's a distraction. Like, you just play with it. You just, yeah. like... <laughs> and what do we do to distractions? Just... Eliminate kick them. them out, yeah. We kick yeah. them out. Boom, distraction. Eat. <laughs> Facebook, eat, you know, it's like, that is insane. Okay, so you hop on the trail, you're in Georgia. What are we dealing with? What is the terrain like? Lots of rocks and roots. Um, the first half is mostly all roots. The second half is mostly all rocks mm. of the whole thing. Uh, it's hard to tell what specific areas are like because there's so many of them. And mm. just kinda, they all blend together. Uh, some of them is like... You're scaling rocks, and others it's just flat. Sometimes it's flat on top of a mountain, like you're bridge walking. At the saddleback, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and sometimes it's very steep and very gradual. Sometimes it's nice and flat, and you can break out into a light jog. You were jogging? <laughs> on the downhills, it's better to get, you know, just let gravity do the thing instead of trying to stop it. It's better for your knees. Oh, really? The walking? Yeah. If your body's getting pulled down by gravity, you may as well just carry that momentum. Mm. That's the inner engineer. Yeah, exactly. You know? Right? Your past haunts you. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Um, What did you eat? Lots of cliff bars, rice, mashed potatoes, mm. stuff that you could either eat while you're walking or put in boiling water, you know, in small quantities. Mm. Uh, my favorite was the Lipton soups. They come in little packs that are a dollar. They make soups? Yeah. There's like four packs mm. in a dollar box. So that's like a 25 cent meal. You just add water in this packet and you got soup, man. Chicken noodle soup was well, delicious. Oh my god. I mean, I bet that's like heaven on earth. Yeah. Especially when it's cold, man. A hot soup. Really good. Nothing else matters. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh my god. So, what kind of animals do you see, like, along the way? Uh, lots. I saw a lot of deer. I mm-hmm. saw bears. I saw some coyotes. A lot of birds of prey. Mm. Um, what are birds of prey? Like that, falcons, eagles? Birds that prey on other things. Yeah, like. Oh, that's falcons, what they are. I thought they were like yeah. a dog. Okay. okay. You got the teeth. Uh, the, not teeth. No, the, oh, the, what do you call it? Yeah. Talon? No, no, no. that's the but whatever. The beak. The beak, right. Yeah, the beak is sharp, so you can pull on. Anyway. They uh saw lots of those. Turtle once on top of a mountain, that was pretty strange. Saw a turtle? On top of a mountain, yeah, I had no idea how it got up there. 
Uh, he was That's sus. Tonight. Yeah. That's very sus. It is. Oh, yeah, Mutant Ninja Turtle. Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, snakes. Lots of different types of animals. Wow. And like, in each of these, you probably have a story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. Is. You said like with the awesome deer, though. you got like nose to nose with it. Yeah, they're not hunted in a lot of areas, so they have no fear of humans. They are closer than I. Like you just walk right by them, they don't even run away. If I had a knife, it hit different. Mm. Just whoosh. would you though? If no, mm. I had food. If I was starving, I would. Mm. So, you're not the type to just hunt, like, oh, let me just see if I can hunt. No. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, not if you don't need it. Well, or it's a sport. It's just me. Yeah. I feel like it'd be a burden anyway. Yeah, exactly. Because you already have click bars and, like, more yeah. practical you, shit to eat. And you gotta move. You can't sit there and skin whatever skin. it is. Skin. Then, like, now, like, gotta waste the meat because you Lord knows you can't eat all by yeah. yourself. Exactly. Or you have to carry it, like... Yeah, I'd eat blueberries and stuff along the trail. They were in season. Naturally just growing. Yeah. Wow. Bears love them, man. Bears? Yeah, they love those blueberries. So, speaking of bears, let's get into, um, you know, Treehouse Show. We just <laughs> dive right into it. So, Ricky has his, his bear encounter story. So, so let's talk about it from start to finish. Like, describe what happened. Um... I have several bear encounter stories, but this one... The maced one. <laughs> yeah, the maced one. I, uh, the trail is curving around a part, and there's mm-hmm. trees in the way, so it's a blind curve. Uh, and we just happened to walk in other directions, and the bear was on all fours walking along, and I did too, and we startled each other as we came to the, you know, the cusp. Mm-hmm. And then it, it like seemed to not really do anything at first, and I was like, oh, hello. Um, and I started backing off. Uh, walking backwards, I'm not going to turn Facing my back on the thing. Yeah, you don't want to run because then they that instinct to chase takes over. Um, but I started walking uphill and it got up on all on mm. two legs and was getting really big, huffing and puffing, and then it got down on all fours again. And by this time, I was maybe 50 feet away, 60 feet away. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hard to judge or remember, um, but start huffing and then I saw it put a lot of weight on his back foot mm. and I had my mace out my bear mace and I took the safety off and it started coming running at me charging at me and so I just pulled the trigger and went for it oh, so sh- yeah it was a good time it was exciting I knew it was gonna make a good story <laughs> it makes a good story <laughs> I don't know the exciting part like what's going through your your brain as like your Lots. encounter with this this beast Lots of bad jokes. Um, I don't know. I'm one of those people that gets calmer when adrenaline gets through, and like, uh, I don't, don't just really focus on what what I can do in the moment. And so I just did what I knew I was supposed to do: back up, gain the upper ground, and use the mace if it decided to charge at me. Which is exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. Like you did. That- like literally, however you're made, that you're made the way you should react. Yeah. Like calm, like, because everyone says, "Oh, be calm," but like ninety nine point nine percent of people are not calm when these things happen. Don't Somehow me. you're wired differently, where you're actually calm. That nature did a good job, like on that part. It's like right. let's make this guy be calm in, like, <laughs> in the situations where ninety nine point nine percent are not calm. Like that's crazy. That like, so I'm the type. I'm scared of little dogs. So like. <laughs> A bear, like, 600? Like, what's a ballpark? How big is oh, this bear? I don't know. It's maybe, like, 6 feet, 7 feet, 6 Jeez. feet. Probably. It was taller than I was, by far. Uh, I don't know, 400 pounds? About well, 400. I couldn't guess, yeah. That's still three so times. So big, yeah. So two times. It was a bear. Was exactly and they're built they different. Yeah. Yeah. They're... Uh, when they let their hair stand straight, they look big. Oh, they have the thing like the cats. They can. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So it's like it's coming at you like and its fur is like. Yeah, that's how I knew it was. Gonna not, do something. Gonna do something. Yeah, exactly. Just for science. That would have been. I can't imagine. Very easily. I'll be. <laughs> but you had no fear, like. Not that life. in the moment. Maybe afterwards, I was like. How did you sleep uh, that night, knowing like that bear could still be? Oh. 
well, at that point, I had gotten like, this was early in the morning, so I had gotten like 16 and 17 miles after that bear mm -hmm. uh, encounter. But yeah, that's wildlife, man. The bears, you know, they're big puppies. They don't want to mess with you unless you mess with them. They know they can kill you. They know you're there. They have great sense of the smells. They know you're there. Yeah, I mean, this one probably just got distracted or startled or whatever. It's a bear's story, not mine. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're not worried about you. Why would you be worried about it? It's like you're not dumb, you know, or foolish. <laughs> about it. What's but, the difference between dumb and foolish? <laughs> uh, I had to ask. Dumb is when you do something, like a mistake that you're not supposed to you should know better. Mm. Stupid is when you don't know better and you make that mistake. Mm. And foolish is when you believe in a false reality. Okay. Like, what did I say? The, the milk, right? The milk in the fridge. If you leave the milk out of the fridge, mm. that's a dumb mistake. If you know, if you don't know at all that the milk spoils, it's supposed to be refrigerated, then you're being stupid. Mm -hmm. And if somebody tells you this is a special kind of milk, it won't spoil if you leave it out. Then you're being foolish. Then you're being foolish. Yeah, that's right. No, like that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense because it's like you get called stupid yeah. or you get called especially dumb. Exactly. That's more like personal. It's like, you call me dumb? Like, yeah. That means like you've been doing that for a while. You should know better. You should yeah. know better. But like if you're called foolish, it still hurts. But it's, it's more so like it's also it's at that moment you're being foolish. Yeah, exactly. You know? The more you know, you know, it's like... Oh, I'm not Webster, but... Yeah. Are, I feel like we are. I feel like we're the oracles. Yeah. You know, I feel like college professors, That's you know, right. they come to a training camp, you know, and then by, at the whim, they're at the mercy, you know, of our consensus That's on right. their ideas. You know, if we, depending on how we're feeling, exactly. we just reject their whole career. Yes. And it just doesn't get taught. You know, That's right. Like, honestly, you know, like... It's only opinions. Exactly. It's opinions until we Everybody's signature. That one, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man, that is insane. Like I'm just like you're I'm almost painting the picture and like I'm almost placing myself, transporting myself into like your story. Like Yeah, it's fun. Thinking yeah. about like what I would do, like that's <laughs> oh man. Okay, so so it's Georgia, yeah. um North Carolina. Yeah. Okay, so what happens in North Carolina? Uh, I in North Carolina. I saw the mama bear in North Carolina. Oh. Each state has several stories. But what What was that like? Uh, that was very interesting. Mm. I had heard. I was walking on the trail, and I heard on the tree that I was right next to this noise, and I assumed it was a squirrel. And I turned to look, and it's a cub. Shit. Like I could reach out and touch this cub. That that's like a death sentence. Yeah, that's even scarier than a charging bear. Let me tell you, just having a cub near you, I think, because the mom is not gonna let you touch that cub. And I turn and there's the mom. How big is she? She's pretty big. Uh, Bigger than the one you made? No. Okay. Well, maybe about the same size. <clears throat> um, but it was like maybe thirty yards from me with its other cub. So I just was like, okay, and I just kept, well, I kept my face turned towards mom. the mom, but then I just kept going. You know, at that point, any direction is away from the cub, so you may as well keep going the direction you're supposed to go. Right. But, yeah, that was interesting. Were you more scared with that one than the mace one? Yeah, I think so, because I wasn't super used to it, uh, the bears being around, and mamas are unpredictable. Yeah. The South. Because it's adrenaline. Yeah, and exactly. that's a fight or flight. Yeah. For them. Exactly. That thing will gladly kill you over the... Over the, the cup. Oh Man, that's insane. Yeah. So, so you go to North Carolina. You say you go to Virginia. Yeah. And then... Um, Tennessee, Virginia. Tennessee, Tennessee, Virginia. West Virginia. The bear thing happened in Tennessee. Uh... One happened in Tennessee, one happened in North Carolina, the two I just mentioned. Okay. Respectively. I think I saw I saw thirteen or seventeen bears in total, including the oh cubs. God. Yeah, that's a lot. Some people don't see any. Must be either that's really insane. lucky or unlucky. 
No, but you were in there. <laughs> you were 20, 123 days? Yeah. That's insane. It's true. It did create a lot of opportunities to see sort of thing. Okay, so like you said you fell too. Like you fell yeah. off a few cliffs. That's you, right. Yeah, like how did how did that happen? Which was the clip the craziest? The craziest uh, was the well, I think the furthest was when I was on this. I can't remember what it's called, but there's part of the trail that in the end of Maine, right mm. before the presidentials, there's like a bunch of boulders that you're hopping across, and the mm. boulders are really deep. Like it's like you're walking on teeth, you know, like the bumps and the ridges and right. goes down in the car. So I had fallen. I had slipped when I was jumping from one to another. And I think I tried to use my stick to uh, catch myself on the next rock, mm. and the stick broke on me and like bent in half. And so I went wow. down. Then I went, luckily feet first, but into the crevice between the two boulders, and I had to fish myself out of there. Oh my god. Yeah. How long were you down? Were you just like laid out for a while like I just fell out? Yeah, you just... I was like, ah, oh, alright, well, guess we gotta go back up. And then I just put my you know, feet in front of me and my back on the back behind me. Get up. You just gotta keep pushing. Yeah, exactly. It's not like somebody else is gonna come by and pull you out of there and you gotta do it. No, definitely not. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> that is insane. And you say you, um... Oh yeah, that's right. I had another. All of my bad falls are because of the freaking hiking poles. But another one snapped when I was climbing vertically, mm. and I went a sheer cliff. Mostly, yeah. It's probably like that. What? It's inverted cliff. Like this? Yeah, you're going up, <laughs> and it's like um, maybe I'll have a picture or something like that later. But yeah, it's. They're, it's pretty sheer. You're like rock climbing. I thought the pretty colors. Like, if you like, could you have died? Fall off on yeah, <laughs> definitely would have fallen like 30, 40 feet. What the fuck? Uh, but I the, grabbed something, pushed myself up, and used the pole to push myself up a little further, and then it snapped underneath me. Uh, and so I had fallen sideways, and just before I went down, I just slammed my hands into this little crevice, and I had, like, really jammed up my fingers, and I got super bloody. There's a bunch of scars here. I think you had a picture I of it. I did have a picture of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think I broke one finger and sprained the other, or sprained and jammed or something. One was a little less than the other, but it kept me from falling. I mean, it probably would have been a lot worse if I had went down. How many feet was that? Uh, I didn't fall much of any there, yeah, but... If you did? If I did, I would have fallen, like, 30 feet, maybe. 30. Oh, my God. That's... That guy could be fatal. <laughs> 30 feet can be fatal. Yeah, that's right. God. Well, a curve can be fatal. Yeah. If you're really unlucky. It's all about luck and, like, <laughs> how you fall and, like, the physics exactly. of it. That is insane. Yeah. So, okay, so you fit... You, you fit get through that hurdle, and then you said you get to Virginia. Yeah. That story, those two stories were up north. Mm. Maine. Yeah, so I went to Virginia, then to Harpers Ferry, Virginia, which is Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. Mm. And I uh, flew up to the north and walked the other half going south. Because they close in October for snow. Mm. Baxter State Park, which is Okay. So, they didn't want to rush to get up there, so I just took a flight and started going down the other way. Oh my god. That was a smart move. Yeah, I think so too. You get to chase the colors. The colors were changing. Mm. Or at the end of their changing. Like the, the trees? Yeah. Mm. It was like that time between them about to fall and the snow coming. Mm. And so I basically moved with that mm. season change. It was really cool. That's the type of shit that, like, you didn't plan it, but... No, yeah, it just worked out really well. I love Maine. Mm. It's great. You go back? I definitely will. Yeah, it's sweet. That's beautiful. What would you say this is on today's episode of Guess the Fruit? Uh, it's not cantaloupe. It's the the green cantaloupe. I can't uh, remember what they're called. Uh, you got it. 
Some melon. Yes. Some melon. Some melon. I can't remember. You're gonna, it's gonna bug me all day. Uh, Let me tell you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Honeydew melon. Honeydew. But yeah, go crazy, man. Knock yourself out. You got asparagus. This might remind you of like, should this, did you eat fruits and blueberries and stuff on the trip? Yeah, blueberries. Not many fruits. Mm. You don't really want to eat things that uh, you don't know what they are. I'd probably be more trouble than it's worth. That's how you end up not alive. Exactly. You know. Um. Speaking of not alive, mm-hmm. you said you saved some lives. I did. Unpack that. <laughs> um. I was in a car, uh-huh. uh, going to a hostel, mm-hmm. which is like a place with a bunkhouse that they let hikers stay for like 25 bucks a night. They stay in the hospital? In the hostel. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Uh, but they, well, I was waiting for the car to pick me up, and it said, end road, there's a curve, I'm going to cross the street, mm-hmm. look both ways, and I can hear the car coming around the curve so i wait for it to come around the curve well i would have been waiting for a while because it didn't make it around the curve the car just went shh and slammed into a tree right there so i was like yes like right on this abandoned roadway not abandoned but desolate roadway and i mean it's just right what are the odds and so i ran over there it was two ladies uh the it was like that and I think the daughter, the mother, who was like in her 70s maybe, mm. was in the passenger seat. And the daughter, I think, got out and tried to go around the other side. So she was outside on the ground. Her leg was all sorts of messed up. Uh, the it was lo- a bad accident. Yeah. Like the front of their car was gone. Uh, it was all sh- – um, yeah. And then the woman, the older woman, had – really bad breathing trouble and heart stuff because i guess she was wearing her seatbelt and the other woman wasn't the compression yeah right so she um so i went in and i made sure they were okay i asked them concussion questions you know what year is it what day is it they were all right Uh, and then on the lady i uh patched her uh the woman on the on the floor once i made sure that the she blew out the car I think she hit the windshield, got out, and then started to walk around to make mm. sure her mom was all right. I don't know. Oh she was, God. but she was on the passenger side on the ground. Um, and so I made sure the older woman was all right. Asked her some questions, made her laugh, which is how I knew she was all right. And then that's what you do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> make puns. <laughs> she, she, I adrenaline situation. She was like, I don't know what happened. We were going leaf spotting, and I said, "Well, you got a pretty good look at these ones." And then she just started laughing, and so she, so I left her, went to the woman, tied her leg up. Uh, I had called the cops on the way just a to cut the car. Or I think she had cut it open right here. It was bad. Yeah, it was bleeding. I tourniqueted it. Tourniquet. I applied a tourniquet, um, with like my, it's the sweater I was wearing. I just. Wow. Uh, and then the cops or the fire department showed up maybe 10 minutes later and just like talked to them made sure that they didn't go into shock and but yeah i mean i don't know when the next car would have came around there was no next car no the hostel people came in picked me up like half an hour after that i think uh so there was nobody on that street there just happened to be a hiker that was watching watching <laughs> yeah that's no, creepy. I'm talking about me, ha- hiker. That oh, was, I thought someone was just watching happened. you. No, <laughs> that's creepy. Like uh, help or like go away. Like yeah, exactly. But it was interesting, man. I got to two two out of three on the live saves. I don't count the older woman, but the woman outside. Probably would have bled out. Yeah, probably would have bled out. So two out of three, you know, that's pretty good odds. What are the odds? <laughs> You're that guardian angel, man. I don't know about that. Guardian coincidence, maybe. Guardian, you you don't believe in like things happening for a reason? No. Mm. The reason things happen is because you make them happen. Mm. You know. How did you make that happen? Stay calm. Stay calm. Don't panic, man. It's the best advice in the world. Don't panic. Don't panic. You hear that, guys? That's right. <laughs> Douglas McAdams. 
That is insane. Like Arthur? Yeah. But like to them, to them, man, you, you're probably a blessing to them because they're just like, anything could happen. Yeah, it was, it was good. I mean, I built some karma up. Oh, yeah. You know? There's such a thing as karma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? That's insane. So they were safe. Ambulance came and took them. Yeah, and they got to there. What state was that? Maine. Maine, okay. I was in Maine. So Maine had a lot of... Maine had a lot of stories, yeah. Maine was hard. The south end of Maine is hard. In what way? It's a lot of mountains. And it was getting really cold on those mountains. And it's like Yeah, you say you got frost nip. Yeah, I did get frost nip on my ears. What is frost nip again? It's like frostbite, but not there yet. Okay. So if your ears are like purple, mm. if they're black, you got frostbite, I mm. think. Frost nip is purple. Frost nip, yeah, it's purple, I think. Mm. Close enough. It's like the normal frost bit. Frost nip is in the middle here. Mm. Uh, you, can, you can come back from frost nip. Yeah, well, obviously. I still got my ears. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I got him no doctor, so I don't know. That's just how I think of it. Um, yeah, it was really cold. The presidentials, you basically go like up the entire mountain, down the entire mountain, up the entire mountain, down at the lake four in a row the elevation change that day was like 1200 up and 1200 down maybe more i think oh my it was like four six thousand foot mountains up and down it was ridiculous uh but but you said that you ironically you said that was your favorite place you thought you would go back oh to maine yeah not that part <laughs> right no that part sucked <laughs> But it started snowing and the wind was really, really, really strong. If I wasn't wearing my pack, I probably would have got like I wouldn't have weighed enough. I don't think. Uh, yeah, because every time I took my pack off, it blew you. Yeah, I was being blown by the wind. I'd have to like duck under a rock or something. But I didn't have any winter gear with me. I just had the a t-shirt, a long sleeve shirt, and one pair of pants. And so I would just keep switching the pants out from my face to my legs every like few minutes so that my legs didn't get too cold and my ears didn't get too cold. Wow. And then at the end of the day, I got up to Mount Washington and they have like tourist stuff there. I'm going to put this down so I can mess with it. Um, they have like tourist stuff there. And so I got somebody to, this really nice Indian family drove me mm. from, you hitchhiked. yeah. I mean, I just stuck my thumb out at the top of the mountain, and they're like, oh, we can take you. We see that you're out here in the freaking cold. Yeah, they had a shuttle up there, but it would have cost $100 to get down the mountain. No, I'm poor, man. Can't do that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, hitchhiking. That's the way to go. Yeah, that was cold, man. The presidential mountains are cold, at least in that time. You could have died. Yeah. You know? Were you were you scared at that moment? Like, no, it was just cold. I knew that I could, you know, keep going. You knew you'd make it through it. Yeah, just one step in front of the other. Don't stop. That's it. Slow down a lot, but don't stop. Mm. Zero times anything is still zero, you know. But yeah, that was cold. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, and I, I know I kind of know what it's like to be like really cold, not to the point of frost nip, mm -hmm. but like I just go out and like I meditate. In the winter time, even last year, yeah. when it's ice, I just meditate in the winter, like, and I do that to myself. I'm not, but I just, I just like, to, I like the mental aspect of controlling your mind. Exactly. You, you can go, you can go much further than you think. Like at the point where you think that you're frozen, no, that's yeah. it's all mental. Then after you break past that, you can do another 30, 40 minutes in that same, and you're good. Yeah, exactly. It's you got to push through your own, you know, limiters in your brain and just keep yeah. going. Did you get to a point where it's like I can't take this no more? Then you push past that. Oh, yeah, every uphill, you're halfway through the uphill, you're swearing. No matter how much you've done before, no matter if you're on your first mile or, you know, thousandth, like, every uphill sucks. But then when you get to the top, you have so much energy. Like, you're, like, huffing and puffing and going really slow. I can't make it up this mountain. Oh, my God. I'm just going to sit right here, and this will be the end. And then you get to the top, and you're like, oh, let's go for a run. I feel so much you know lighter so much more energy it's weird but i think that's just mental versus conditioning you know you're conditioned like you said for so much more than your brain stops you at 
Yeah, those are hard mountains, though, on some parts. Yeah. Would you say that was like, if you did have, a, or did you have a breaking point on that trip where you wanted to give up? Or was that the point? When where it was came? super cold on that mountain, I was like, was that the closest? After this, been? yeah. I mean, I never would. I can't even spell quit, you know. But not without an e in there. Um, <laughs> I love that. But I definitely was like, I have to get off the trail. I can't be here anymore. I got to get somewhere with heat. I mean, after that, that guy, that um, guy and his wife and his two kids drove me to like a Walmart so I can get winter gear. Mm. I stayed in that town for like four or five nights in a row. I just did not want to get back on the trail. Mm. But that's expensive. You took a break. Yeah, exactly. I took a break. A non-needed but probably much needed one. Mm-hmm. So how long were you hitchhike or trying to hitchhike? Um, on that mountain? Mm-hmm. Not too long. Maybe 15 minutes I was standing out there in the cold. How many cars passed by before? <laughs> Several. Several. Lots of people. Hitchhiking is like a little cult. The people that pick you up on hitchhiking have hitchhiked before. And then once you put your thumb out and join that little community, then now I'm going to pick up hitchhikers now because it's just got so much stigma and it's not anything. It's like, mm. yeah, that guy needs a ride. That's all it is, you know? That's all it is. <laughs> it's It's like... We have this thing in, in human nature where it's like we fear the unknown. Yeah. And you being on the receiving end of that unknown, it's no longer unknown to exactly. you. Exactly. So now that aspect of fear that's associated with the unknown is is gone. Now you can yeah. hitch hikers. That's what you do. Yeah, exactly. You know? Because they're not hitchhikers. They're just people. That's right. And I got a lot of karma to pay back too, but you know. Oh, yeah? Yeah. There's so many generous and nice people out there the trail provides man people will buy you you'll be sitting getting groceries at dollar general and somebody will bring you candy or a gatorade they're like oh, i saw you i know what you're doing here's some food you need a nice place to sleep tonight you need a shower that like, happens they, a lot a lot yeah it's crazy the people are so nice how many how many people did you meet like on the trek that like on the trail i would meet uh, people maybe I'd have like six days of solitude and one day of like being in a town or something. On the trail, I'd maybe pass <laughs> bubbles of people, like groups of hikers, but then be alone for a while and pass the other group going the other direction or something. Hmm. The bubble they call it. Did you uh, did you run into like other like solo hikers? Yeah, but they're all either sec. I think I was the last through hiker of the season. Maybe there was one more after me. But most people start north in July. or Yeah, start going south, I mean, in July. And I started going north in July. Mm, you were late. Yeah, I was very late, yeah. Because you don't want to get caught in winter. No. Most, or even, like, fall. Exactly. It can get cold real quick. In especially, the mountains. Exp yeah. Um, especially at night, too. Yeah, it was crazy, though. Then, uh, you meet some... Really interesting people. People from all sorts of backgrounds. I met a guy that was finishing, and he had a stroke on the left half of his body, so he was walking with, like, one arm, one hand, you know? Or one one arm, one leg. Like, just... But he did the whole trail. What? It was crazy. Really inspiring dude. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I taught him some one-handed sign language so he can speak a little bit better. You speak sign language? I'm learning. I was learning before I started the trail. He had a seizure his whole life, or he had a seizure on the trek? He had a seizure right before he started the trek. And he still <laughs> Yeah. I Can met a woman. Imagine? A woman named Pink Panther, and she was in her upper 60s, early 70s. Pink Panther. Pink Panther. That's that her was, name. That's her trail name, yeah. People have trail names. Yeah, you don't use your real name. <laughs> what is that? I d it's, it's describe what is this? This is so interesting. It's, your tr it's like a... Stripper name. Yeah, sure. I suppose it's analogous. Yeah, like a call sign for a pilot, you know? Uh, it's the name that you give people. If somebody gives it to you, you don't give it to yourself. Well, you can, but you'd be kind of mm. a dork. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Narcissist, yeah. Uh, there's some great ones, and there's some really bad ones. <laughs> Pink Panther's kind of cheesy, Piss but I, I like it. Yeah, Pink Panther. Met a guy named Pissbag, <laughs> but he was a really cool dude. It was just funny. Uh, I met a, let's see, who else? Candor and Ranger and mm. a bunch of people. You know, they all have names like that. Somebody, they did something or have some sort of 
story behind their name. That was really cool. That's super fascinating. Did they give you one? Yeah, man. What's, what was yours? Rocket Man. <laughs> what is that? Did they, apps, did they ever man. describe it, or that's just who you are? Uh, well, I told everybody uh, that I'm going to be an astronaut. Mm. You know? That's going to happen. You can take that as fact. Mm. I promise you, man. I'm going to end you up really being really want to. Not want to, going to. You're going to. That's right. That's the, the difference. The universe is going to There's a difference. Happen. I'm going to make that happen. Yeah, exactly. You know? Mm. Become blind, get rich, and fly yourself. It doesn't matter. It's going to happen. Mm. So that, you know, rocket man then. And I was also, you know, going really fast. Most people average it in like seven months, eight, six to eight months on average. And I did it in four months. So, mm. you know, I was going three quarters of speed. Uh that's not right. Three halves the speed. And, uh, yeah, man. And I'm burning out this fuel up here alone, you know? <laughs> Rocket Man, that's a great name. That sounds like a movie. That sounds like a movie that whoever directs those one shot movies, <laughs> like Birdman. Yeah. It would be a single shot movie, you yeah. know, and it would just be scene to scene of like a, a one day. That was just crazy. It was Rocket Man. There you go, you know? Rocket Man. <laughs> That's it. Like, and it's like starring Ricky. That's <laughs> you know, one of those yep. autobiography. You know. That's right, man. Well, they already got one for Elton John called Rocket Man, but I'll take it. Oh really? Yeah, it's great. You should watch it. Mm. Um, that is the people, man. Yeah, that was cool. Though, but the, we were talking before about the anonymity. You know, you, it doesn't matter if they judge you if you're never going to see him again. Mm. It's especially easy if they don't even know your name. They just know you as Rocket Man. I bet people told you some shit. Yeah, you could exchange real life secrets and life stories and burdens and mm. things, and you really connect with people. And then you're like, all right, so you never have a good life. And Damn. the next day you're gone, and they're 40 miles apart. What's the craziest story someone told you? I can't tell you that. Well, like, <laughs> I would never know. Who it um, is. I would never fucking know. I met two guys. I can't remember their name, but I met them and they had used the trail to quit smoking meth. They were two months off and two months on the trail. And they were doing it. They had just met. They didn't know each other before, but they were both happened to be quitting smoking crystal meth by walking the trail. The yeah, they were the really coolest dudes. Uh, but yeah, it was. That's a crazy story. Like, he told me all about. They told me all about all the shit that they went through. All the stuff that they tried, and they just decided to hike the trail instead. And it's been working out for them, man. And lots of different people. I met B-52 pilots. I met F-16 pilots. I those met, are jets. Yep, yeah, those are jets. I met um, crazy old ladies. I met a guy that was a millionaire. Um, yeah, I met a bunch of professors. I met a professor at... University of Illinois. Here, he was a really cool guy. Cradger was his name. Cradger. That was his trail name. I have no idea what his real name is, but he was a pretty cool dude. What were some of their reasons for doing this? Mostly people spend their entire lives thinking about the trail, and they like spend years planning, and then they finally I mean, years. Yeah, there's people that like. Then there's this guy. Plan out. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I can't stand it. Just do it. You know, do it right and do it now. Um, you should call yourself stupid, dumb, or foolish. All three, all the time. <laughs> Man, I've called myself every name in the book. When you're out there by yourself with nobody to talk to, you get through every single thing in your head. And then you got to come out the other side. Did you feel a little cuckoo sometimes? Like talking to yourself? I'm already cuckoo. I already sing and dance and whistle on the streets here. In the I don't care if people, you know, look at me. So I was exacerbated by being out there alone. When you're alone like that, like it's like... The longest I've been like completely in solitude like that would be like when I'm, I, I lived in Ethiopia for a while oh, okay. like in the mountains. And then there was this town, like the hyenas would come out at night, very, really? very desolate. And I was studying for this exam. So I was the type to like, believe it or not, I was actually studious for like one year of my life. <laughs> that was that one year. I don't know what it was. I think I watched a movie or something. Theory of everything or something. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I want to be whatever. Great, the, yeah. I want to be, um, what's his name? The uh the dude who's in a chair, the wheelchair. Stephen Hawking. Yeah, I was like, I want to be Stephen Hawking. So I just like <laughs> was inspired chair. to. Long story short, 
like my parents left the town and mm-hmm. I was just like just studying. It was cold. Like we didn't have no air conditioner. So I'm by this like electric heater just studying for like two, <laughs> two, three days. Don't go outside. Don't see another human. But nothing longer than that. Like where I'm like out of contact for two. So I can't imagine like you said you would go six days, seven days sometime without going to a town. Yeah, exactly. The longest I didn't see a person was maybe two weeks. Wow. Yeah, it was fun. People mm. suck, man. They're annoying. I always ask you questions, the same questions. <laughs> people? Yeah, just people, you know. Mm. Lots of platitudes out there in the world. But uh, I don't know. You learn a lot about it yourself, you know. It's, it was very validating, I think, which is really hard to do, to have an experience that, you know, validates who you are as a person. You have this idea of yourself, and you're not really sure it's true. Mm. And you always dream, like, the kid in Little League that's, like, in the right field. Man, if this ball ever gets hit in this direction, it never gets hit here. But if it does, I'm going to make a great catch, and I'm going to throw it in. It's going to be a triple play. And then finally, finally, you get that shot into your, your area. And I caught the ball. I mean, it was great. Mm. You know? You have this idea, but you never get the opportunity to see if it's true. And there's a lot of stuff I didn't know about myself. and Like what? Um, I like that I miss human contact a lot more than I thought I did. Literal contact. Mm. Just, you know, feeling somebody's skin. Like a handshake. Not necessarily unplatonic, but that's not a word. Um, but, like, that sort of thing is... You don't really notice that you you need that until you do. And then you're like, damn, all right, I'm not going to waste the opportunities when I see them. Mm. It's good. You know, always self-improvement, growth. Mm. Mm, indeed. It's almost like a sensory deprivation tank. <laughs> yeah. You know, but like. Exactly. You got to rely on yourself a humor. They, um, the ancient. Like, I feel like you know, I was reading this book, and as they say, like, women have a, um, they have a natural rite of passage. Mm-hmm. They literally, like, produce eggs, and, like, their body, li- they have periods and stuff like that. It's like, yep, yeah, you're no longer a kid. It's like. Yeah. But men, we don't really, I mean, obviously, like, yeah. Like, Besides for acne and humping your mom's couch, but yeah, I suppose. Pretty much, you get a beard, <laughs> but it's nothing like a huge physical change, you know? That's true. You just become, you just, you just become a big kid if you don't, like, really go Yeah. Through, which yeah. we see that all the time. But it's, it's almost like ancient you know cultures would have this thing um they would send the men out in like a cave just in solitude Mm -hmm. and that would be their their coming of age that would be their okay now you see what the world is like without that shelter of your parents without that shelter of your mother's bosom whatever you know you're exposed to the elements you gotta fit for yourself then they would either not come back you know or they would come back reborn you know and that's yeah that's exactly the way it is some people are super old and they don't grow up they just don't have that opportunity to like be scared push yourself into a situation that you don't want to be comfortable with learn something new you know they just get complacent i think people in you know retirement homes should be trying their best to improve themselves every day even if you're at the end of your life that's the way it is one more push-up than yesterday that's all you can do that's all you can do so, like, on the, the exciting side, though, did you meet any, like, crazy people or, like, creepy people or, like, scary people? <laughs> yeah. I met – I hitchhiked into a town, and this couple picked me up. Mm-hmm. The, the man who was driving was in his, like, early 30s. Mm-hmm. His girlfriend, couple, wife, I don't know, they're, but they were definitely, you know. Uh, they she, were definitely what? Fucking. She was, like, like – in the car? No. But they were a couple, you okay, know. Okay, okay, Uh they were she was like in her 60s like visibly older like you could tell you know <laughs> mm. it was really weird she must have had 48 40 years on her mm. significant other and she had three fingers in total <laughs> just these three and she had nubbins on every other one and she had in those three fingers a whole handle of uh, Jack. She's like, yeah. I was like, no, thanks, man. But they were, first of all, the sweetest people ever. Really nice, you know. Had great 
uh, conversation. They weren't, they made sure I was comfortable, which is weird for letting a stranger into your car, making sure they're comfortable. Um, but yeah, they were like homeless for a really long time living out their car and they just drive around the country and together. Yeah. No, it's really weird. She lost her fingers through frostbite apparently when she was, yeah, isn't that crazy? Hiking. No, they were just driving around in the, I was hiking. I threw up my, they just happened to stop by and pick me up. They, lost, they got frostbite in the car. No, years ago. Mm. Like they got, the woman got frostbite when she was like living on the streets years mm. and years and years ago. But at the current day, they were, you know, homeless in their car, which is, they were interesting though. <laughs> I bet they gave you some. What's some crazy advice they gave you? Uh, oh gosh, I can't remember it's mm. verbatim. Certainly, uh, don't be so worried about things. Like the guy was telling me all about that he was super worried that he wasn't gonna make it, being like living in his car, and and now he's been doing it for years, and he's like it's so much easier than I thought. Um. Which is true. I lived out of my car in Houston for a bit. That was fun. Uh, yeah, they were <laughs> they were really cool. I wish I could remember their names. Um, yeah, that was that was that was the major uh, person that I I think was the most out there. Mm. Those two people were very outgoing. Just eccentric. Yes, exactly eccentric. You can tell it when you see it. Yeah, they just like didn't really care what anybody else thought, which was really cool. You know, that's uh, confidence in yourself. You gotta admire it when you see it. Mm -hmm. Some things go unsaid. Yeah, exactly. You know, even if they don't say anything, it's just people. That's some right. people inspire you, but just by virtue of who they are. Yeah, dude. <clears throat> be how you speak. Never speak on how you be. Right. That's from mm -hmm. a song. That's from Scarecrow. It's by Soul. That's a good song. That's a like a rock band. Yeah, it's all right. Mm. Sounds about rock. Yeah. <laughs> man, man, I, I know you got the snake bite. Mm. We have so many things. We have yeah. so many stories. Unfortunately, our time here has come to an end. <laughs> um, we gotta have you back on. We oh, gotta, I'm sure. We, if if I know you're traveling soon, you'll be out. But if you're if you're in the Chicago area, or like if I'm, you going back to Houston? Uh, I'm going to Arizona next. Ooh, that's go, a new adventure. Yeah, teach at a high school there. Should be interesting. Man, Never I wish been you there. all the best. <laughs> and we we gotta we gotta like part two and get into you know, the rest of that and then like all the other stuff you did. Absolutely. Same for you, man. We talked a little bit about what happened to you, but. Yeah, we gotta talk more, man. It's we been three to. years. No, it's been four years. Like we gotta yeah. do a better job. Exactly. You know, everything we've learned, like we know how to navigate this world better. Now we gotta apply it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and we got sixty years to go anyway. We don't really. Now, if we're doing it right. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I don't have kombucha here. Ouch. Cross legged is harder than it looks. Um, stay hydrated, stay breathing in this good ass oxygen. And most importantly, most importantly, stay basic. Hey, you wanna go to the race? Can't take this MS okay. We gonna party today. Uh, anxiety, where did you go? Depression, you can't say hello. Say then are my friends or my foes. Say then are my friends or my foes. Hey, you wanna go to the race? Take this MS okay, we gonna party today